All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to the Most High Elohim in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahushua HaMashiach, who the world eagerly called Jesus Christ. This is the young Hebrew, Shamar Yehuda, a.k.a. Slim Wolf the Jew. And today's lesson will be recompense. Recompense. Um, what I mean by recompense is white folks. You white folks will have to pay for the crimes of your forefathers. And you will have to pay for the past 400 some odd years of what you've done to oppress the Most High's chosen people. And I know a lot of you out there who love your oppressor, you Negroes out there who love your oppressor, and the those white folks who feel as if you don't have to pay for what your forefathers did and at all. Let's just go to the, because I know this is a scripture that a lot of you oppressor lovers and white folks like to use. Let's go to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse 16. So it says, parents shall not be put to death for children nor children be put to death for parents. A person shall be put to death for his own crime. All right, so let's think about that last line. It says a person shall be put to death for his own crime. All right, and it says the parents shall, shouldn't be put to death for the children and likewise for the parents. Okay. Let's just remember that this is only put in the circumspect for the Israelites. This law was given for the Israelites. Now, let's also remember that... um. All right, let's remember this. If if a person shall only you got you guys aren't doing anything to stop the oppression of black folks today. You're not doing anything to recompense us for the hell that our ancestors went through back then. You're not doing anything to show that you're sorry for what your forefathers did to us, did to our for did to our forefathers back then. And you're not doing anything to try to stop the oppression of what's going on today. You're not doing anything to try to stop the the low-key modern-day slavery that's going on in these prison systems, the way that you guys set it up uh, with all these uh, minimum wage jobs. And, you know, you pretty much, it's pretty much just modern-day slavery. You know, you still got to go to a plantation and work your ass off for scraps of what y'all make. Salakia, I didn't mean to use that bad language, but excuse me, Father. But you don't do anything to try to stop that. And uh, uh, you guys are transgressing a lot of the Torah. A lot of the law that you claim is done away with in your in your fake ass Christian churches, you know, with all this religion talking about the law is done away with yet and still you want to keep tithing, which is a part of the Old Testament. Ain't that a trip? Well, let's go to the book of <clears throat> I believe it's Deuteronomy chapter. I think it's twenty. Twenty-four, verse fourteen through fifteen. So it says, and 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 keep in mind, we are strangers to this land, and so are you. But you've been running this land for a long time, white folks in America. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter twenty-four, verse fourteen through fifteen. So it says, "You shall not abuse a needy, destitute laborer, whether a fellow countryman or stranger in one of the communities of your land." But you did that. You whipped our backs when we didn't listen to what you said. Huh? You took our scroll and tried to use scriptures that you possibly twisted. Or they could have been added in because we know that you devils tampered a lot of our scroll. Obey your slave master. Obey this and obey that. When you took it out of context, had nothing to do with us obeying you. I'm talking about beating with many stripes. It's talking about spiritual judgment. You got to pay for that, man. Let's keep going. And it says, whether a countryman or a stranger in the communities of your land, you white folks don't even care about your own people. A fellow countryman, you do your white, you do your own white folks worse than you do us. Especially the ones that, that you call N-I-G-G-A lovers. Shoot. Shouldn't do us wrong. Shouldn't pay us freaking 292 as a waiter. You know? Let's do this again. Verse 15. You must pay him his wages on the same day. But yet and still, you make us wait one to two weeks. 
so you can before you can pay us. And then you tax us, you tax the hell out of us with Uncle Sam. And it says, before the sun sets, and for he is needy and urgently depends on it. Yeah, we urgently depend on these on this money, man. To freaking provide for our families, which we barely can do because you set it up just that way. So that we can barely have enough to take care of our family. But you oppressor lovers out there say that things have changed. Else will he cry to Yahuwah and you will incur your guilt. We've already cried out to Yahuwah. We've already cried out to the Most High, who you call J-E-S-U-S. Yahushua, the Messiah, who you call Jesus Christ. And he ain't no white man either. He a black man. Read Revelation chapter 1, verse 14 through 15. Oppress the heck out of us. Let's go to the book of Exodus, chapter 22, verse 15 through 16. This is what you guys did, and you're gonna have to be put, you're gonna have to, you're gonna get dealt with, thus saith the most high when he returns. And a lot of y'all gonna feel some type of way when you find out he a black man. So let's go to the book of Exodus, chapter 21, verse 16. And it says this: He who kidnaps a man, whether he has sold him or still holding him, shall be put to death. You kidnapped us from West Africa. We originally come from Jerusalem, but you kidnapped us from West Africa. And you sold us to other nations and to other Caucasian folks to different plantations. And regardless if you sold us or not, it's even in the law whether if you hold them, whether if you're still holding us on your plantation, you're going to get dealt with. Boom. And you go to the bottom of the seas and you feed people seafood when you're not even supposed to do that. You put pork in everything. You, you made it to the point where you got mixed fabrics and wool and linen and all that on our freaking work uniforms. You made it to the point where you, you, you mix GMO fruit. You put your, your DNA cross a cucumber with a banana and make a banana or a boo bumper or whatever you want to call it. You 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 transgressing heck of laws, man. And 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 then we go to the book of Deuteronomy to, to show you that you're in the wrong for doing what you're doing. Book of Deuteronomy chapter 22. Verse 9. So it says this, you shall not sow your vineyard with a second kind of seed, else the crop from the seed you have sown in the yield of vineyard may not be used. Hmm, let's see. You can't, you can't plant a fruit and then try to use a different kind of fruit, seed, to try to make another different fruit. Let's see. You shall not plow with an ox and an ass together. That's verse 10. You can't be crawl you you white folks in your science and all of that you try to crossbreed a donkey with a pig and make a dig or a punky you know what i'm saying or you make such such an abomination and in the in the freaking crossbreed comes out so aggressive that it dang near kills the people who created it that's shall payback right there some of it but it's still coming though come on now you shall make tassels on the four corners of the garment so like you i'm sorry Deuteronomy 22 and 11. You shall not wear cloth with combining wool with linen. All these clothes that you all have created for all these, it, it, the way you destroyed us, you have us wearing mixing fabrics when we come to work. You have us mixing fabrics whenever we go out. You know, it's kind of hard. You made it just that hard for us. You overdid. What, for, first of all, the reason why you have to pay is because you overdid what the Most High instructed you to do. Your, 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 your whole job was just to oppress us and to make us suffer. But you overdid what you were supposed to do. Especially when you lynched us. Let's go to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 21, verse 23. So it says this. You must not let, and this is talking about hanging him on a tree. You must not let the corpse remain on the stake overnight. 
you must bury him the same day. For an impaled body is an affront to Elohim. You shall not defile the land that Yahuwah Elohim is giving you to possess. So the land that the Most High gave to you to possess for 400 some odd years, because we, we coming up on, you know, time's running out, white people, um, that you should not defile. It's, he gave you the land of America to possess. But you transgressed the law because it was actually you was actually just supposed to burn the body and let it and bury it the same day that you lynched us. But you know what you did? You let it swing in the trees for months, weeks, multiple days, sometimes years, and you let the birds pick at our bodies, man. You you got to pay for that, man. And, and going back to the cross and see Monsanto, all that stuff, all that GMO fruit, man, y'all have to pay for that, man. Every fruit is supposed to bear a seed, okay? Let's go to the book of Genesis, chapter 1. Verse 12, here we go. And the earth brought forth vegetation, seed bearing plants of every kind and trees of every kind, bearing fruit with the seed in it. And Elohim saw that this was good, bearing fruit with seed in it. Why do we have seedless fruits, white folks? Why are you creating all these GMO fruits when it's already been scientifically proven? If you constantly eat these, these, these seedless fruits, you're going to perish and you're going to die. What was up with that? Here we go. And this is Elohim telling us that he gave us fruits with seed. But yet and still, you claim that the Most High is your God as well. And that you just are so holy and you're such a set apart holy nation. But let's see what he had to say. Let's go to the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 29. Genesis 1 29. Elohim said. See, I give you every seed-bearing plant that is upon all the earth. And every tree that has seed-bearing fruit, they shall be yours for food. And to all the animals on the land, to all the birds of the sky, to everything that creepeth on the earth in which there is breath of life, I have given all green plants for food. And it was so. Hmm. But yet and still, you feed these people, you feed these animals a bunch of hash and hay and feed of what, of what the Elohim knows what is in that stuff. And you feed them steroids and you feed them all kinds of antibiotics to give them bigger. And when you kill them and you slaughter them, you just, you just, you just, you just, you just, you just kill them. You know what I'm saying? You. And you just make them bigger and you package them so that way you can just have a bigger business. And you recreate animals and you, and you clone them when you're not supposed to do that. Because we know it ain't that, it ain't that much freaking meat in the world for the, world. The, the whole store is just to be packed with a bunch of food. With meats and all that. Ain't that much meat and ain't that damn much animals in the world, man. Ridiculous, man. And you kill animals for no reason. You're not even supposed to do that. But let's see. You profane the Sabbath day. You make it to the point where you know we the Israelites. And you know once we wake up, we was going to want to take that day off. But you make it to the point where we can't work on the Shabbat. Now let's see. The book of... Uh, <clears throat> let's go to the book of Genesis chapter 2. Verse 2 through 3. And this is the first law implanted in the law of the Most High, who you and oppressor loving Negroes claim is done away with. Because you want to lie and try to keep the lost sheep of the house of Israel still sleeping lost. Because you know, once we wake up, that's your ass. On the seventh day, Elohim finished the work that he had been doing. And he ceased on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So Elohim himself, who you call God, Almighty God, had it had the Sabbath implanted. But yet and still, during all through slavery, even in the proof in the movies, that you forced 
Sunday service BS down our throats. You told us Sunday service and white Jesus is the way. And praise Jesus on Sunday when it's nowhere in the scriptures that people was going to a synagogue on a Sunday. Unless they was doing pagan worship, of course. Profaning the Shabbat. And Elohim blessed the seventh day and declared it holy. Because on it, Elohim rested from all the creation that he had done. So we know that the scriptures tell you to honor the Sabbath. That's the seventh day, correct? Let's go to the book of Exodus. Because I got a question after we read this. Let's go to the book of Exodus. Chapter 20, verse 8. And let's see all the laws that you've been breaking for the past 400 some odd years for as long as we've been in America. Let's go to Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. I mean, it's set apart. Keep Do it right. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. So Monday, let's see, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Even a song told you when the Sabbath day was, when the seventh day of the week was. So from Sunday to Friday, you can do your work. Those are the days you're allowed to do your work. Mm -hmm. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahuwah, your Elohim. The seventh day, that's Saturday. That's 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 the day for the for the, for the Lord, who you call the Lord. You shall do, you shall not do any work. You, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, or your cattle, or the stranger who is within your settlements. Y'all and y'all, we ain't supposed to do no work. No one's supposed to be doing nothing. 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 We just supposed to be chilling, resting. But you got us busting our backs because. The work gonna be you did the, the place gonna be busy on a, on a Saturday, buddy. <laughs> Here we go, verse eleven. For in six days Yahuwah made heaven and earth and sea, and all that is in them, and he rested on the seventh day. Therefore Yahuwah blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. And with all this, you still don't understand why you have to pay. Because all of the iniquity that you have done, the constant, constant, no repentance, no trying to change anything. And you killed all the white folks who tried to wake us up and tried to get us up out of here. You killed them. Those are the ones that the Most High going to save. Not you. Not, not you evil white folks. Not the ones who don't want to bow down and confess that we the Jew. That we the chosen people of Israel. Oh, but don't worry. You going to confess on that day of who you call the Lord. You going to confess. Let's see all the laws that you've been breaking. All you white children out there, all you white teenagers that may be listening to my channel, honor your father and your mother. But yet and still, you want to disrespect your mom and your dad. Oh, uh, Amy, F you and this and that. I want to kill you and dad. Boy, I know if I'd have said some crap like that, I'd have got killed right on the spot with my mama. Here we go. And it says that you may long endure on the land that Yahuwah your Elohim has assigned to you. <sighs> but I know some white folks who don't play that. Yeah, they're, they're, they're hurt. They're, they're disciplining their kids just like a black person to discipline their kids. Here we go. You shall not murder. You killed our people for no reason in slavery. You would just take one person and just kill them. Or you would hang the bodies for no apparent reason. No justification. You would just kill them. Let's go to the let's before we go to all the other all the other um laws that you've breaking. Let's go to these laws down here that you've been breaking for a minute. Let's see. Exodus chapter twenty one verse twenty through twenty. Exodus chapter twenty one, verse twenty three through twenty five. This is this is this is what. This is the only reason why you should be killing, okay. But if. Any other damages ensues, the penalty shall be life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burn for burn, wound for wound, bruise for bruise. That's interesting, isn't it? The law is spiritual. And I hope you understand that these laws are going to apply to you too in the day of Yahuwah. That you're, everything that you did to us is going to happen to you worse. And you're going to be in slavery under Satan. And even probably in even other in a stranger nation that you probably 
that you probably don't need that you've never even heard of that nobody's ever heard of. You're gonna you're gonna get it. But let's go back to Exodus twenty. Okay, Exodus twenty three and uh, thirteen. This is in the Tanakh. So it says, "You shall not steal, but you stole the land from the Native Americans. You stole this land from the Native Americans." You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Lying, saying that you saw this when you didn't see that. You would you would be a false witness to put a nigga in jail. That's what you call us, a nigga in jail. Just because you see us as a threat, because you know who we are. Because you're scared. Scary. And I know a lot of white folks like to say, well, but things have changed and God is going to. No, 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 no. You know, just like I know and everybody else knows, we serve a just Lord. You honestly think he's just going to let that fly? What you did to us, just going to let that fly? You honestly think he's going to let what's going on right now going to fly? You honestly think that's just going to, he's just going to let it fly? You honestly think the most high is a joke? That he's just going to let that fly? Nah, it's not going to happen, bro. You should not commit adultery. Let's see, during slavery, you made our sisters play something called the winch. And you would take them while you know they were married to us when we jumped the broom with the women. And you would rape them and make babies with them. Or you would force them to be your women. And you beat it into them to the point where it became a genealogy thing, a ge genealogical thing. To the point where, hmm, I don't know. You got our, our our women out here want to date you more than they want to date us. Most of our most of most of the black men want to date your women, the white women more than they want to date their own women. I don't discriminate, aka I'ma date a white bitch if I want to. So like, excuse my language, father. You're gonna you you gonna have to pay for that, man. And let's go to uh, Exodus twenty one and twenty. All those times that you hit slaves and they died, you just hit them for no reason, they just died. You got to pay for this too. When a man strikes his slave, male or female, with a rod and he dies there, then he must be avenged. You got to pay for that. You got to pay for that, man. But let's remember this. Just because it didn't happen back then, that don't necessarily mean it's not going to happen. Let's go to the book of Ecclesiastes. I believe it's, yes, it's going to be Ecclesiastes, Sorry, all I'm looking for. Give me a second. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 16 through 17. For I have set my mind to learn wisdom and to observe the business that goes on in the world, even to the extent of going without sleep day and night. I have observed that Elohim, that all that Elohim brings to pass, indeed, Men cannot guess the events that occur under the sun, for man tries strenuously but fails to guess them. And even if a and even if a sage should think to discover them, he would not be able to guess them. So here's the thing. You're not gonna you're you're not gonna get it. You're not you may you might not you may not necessarily get it now, but you're gonna get it. You're gonna get it eventually. And it's coming soon. To a theater near you. But yeah, let's go to the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 9. I mean, Salakia, chapter 8, verse 10. No, yeah, 10. And we read this. And here's another frustration. The fact that the sentence opposed for evil deeds is not executed swiftly. 
<sighs> all you arrogant white folks and all you Jewish people out there, you honestly think, you just think that the most high just ain't never going to happen, huh? It ain't never going to, it just ain't never going to happen to you, huh? Because it ain't, ain't no signs that it's going to happen yet, hmm? which is why men are emboldened to do evil. That's why y'all keep doing evil because you think it's not going to happen. It, it, if the if wages were paid instantly, y'all y'all wouldn't be doing what you're doing right now. Y'all y'all be bowing down right now and confessing that who you call Jesus, that's not his real name. His name is Yahushua, but confessing that he's a black man, that we the Israelites, and you will stop oppressing us. But it ain't executed swiftly, though. Why is, in slot, and let's go to verse 12, the fact that a sinner may do evil a hundred times and his punishment still be delayed. You doing evil over and over and over and over, but your punishment—it—it—it it, it, it seems like your punishment is being delayed. No, the Most High got His angels just recording everything that you're doing, and it's just, it's just building up and piling up and piling up and piling up, and you only and you gonna get it double, so don't don't think you're not gonna get it, man. For although I am aware that it will be well with those who revere Elohim, since they revere Him. And it will not be well with the scoundrel, and he live, and he will, and he will live not long because he does not revere Elohim. There is frustration that occurs in the world. Sometimes an upright man is requited according to the conduct of the scoundrel, and sometimes a scoundrel is requited according to the conduct of the upright. I say that is all frustration. It really is all frustration because even Negroes back in slavery who knew who they were, because some of you, some of them smart white folks, let them read. Because they knew that eventually, if that didn't happen, her recompense was going to come. And this is before y'all tampered with our scrolls, by the way. Um, when slave rebellions occurred, y'all killed almost the whole plantation. And it just seemed like y'all just kept going more and more into power because Negroes kept going more and more in fear. It was a fear and they were oppressive. And you get you get recompensed the, the rewards of a just man while we get recompensed the rewards of a sinner. Even though our sins cause us to get in this position. Don't get it twisted. You didn't just bring us over here because you're just that strong of a nation. The most high allowed that. Okay? Don't get it twisted. But best believe you're going to have to pay for that. And the crimes of your forefathers too, man. Let's go to the book of <clears throat> Rome. Yeah. But wait, wait, wait. We're going to prove something right quick. That this belongs to us. That the reason why we're here is because our forefathers sinned. Let's go. Lamentations chapter 5, verse 7. It says, our fathers sin and are no more. And we must bear their guilt. We got to bear their guilt. We, gotta, we have to bear their guilt for now. So, bam. So, yes, let's go to the book of uh, <clears throat> Isaiah. Chapter 14, verse 1. And we're going to show you. No, verse, verse 14 through 21. Because a lot of y'all like to say, well, my forefathers did it. I didn't do it. Uh, they 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 not here. Yeah, but you here, my, you here, bro. So you're going to have to get it, man. Isaiah 14 and 21, man. Yeah, let's go. Prepare a slaughtering block for his sons. Because of the guilt of their father, let them not arise to possess the earth. Then the world's face shall be covered with towns. Let them not arise to possess the earth. But listen to what it says. Prepare slaughter, a slaughtering block for his sons because of the guilt of their father. Fathers. What does that sound like? That sounds like y'all going to have to pay for the crimes of what your forefathers did. You have to pay for the wrong of what they did. Matter of fact, it's even in the law of Moses who you claim that it's been done away with. That even he, even the Most High told him that they were quite people. He going to fight you. But just remember, just because it ain't happened yet don't mean it's never not going to happen. So here we go. So it says, 
Exodus chapter 20, verse 5. It says, you shall not bow. Okay, hold on. Uh, I, Yahuwah. I, for I, Yahuwah, your Elohim, and an impassionate Elohim, visiting the guilt of the parents upon the children upon the third and fourth generations of those who reject me. Well, we already read in Ecclesiastes that the scoundrel rejects the Most High and that he doesn't serve the Most High. And we've already proven that you're the scoundrel because you transgress every single law under the sun. Everything from not eating pork to adultery to bearing false witness to add and taking away from the word, saying that the word, that the laws of the Old Testament been done away with and Everything you didn't your forefathers stole us and made us slaves and everything. Okay. Third and fourth generations. You guys are the third and fourth generations at the most I was talking about. You're gonna have to pay for that. And you honestly think the most I forgot about that, bro? Let's go to the book of Psalms. You go to the book of Psalms. You already know where we're going with this. Chapter 9, verse 13. So it says, For he does not ignore the cry of the afflicted. He requites, he who requites bloodshed is mindful of them. He does not ignore the cry of the afflicted. He remembers everything that you did. And he is going to make you pay for what you did. And yes, you're going into slavery. Slavery. I know it sounds uh, uh, weird to the sleep Negroes, but yes. He's, they're going into slavery, man. And y'all over here changing the names of the Most High and saying that, uh, <clears throat> that, uh, hmm, that he, he just, you know, you change, you change the Most High's name to God and Jesus and all that. And you just say names don't matter. Let's see, bro. Let's go to the book of, uh, Psalms chapter 8, verse 1. No, verse 2. And it says, O Yahuwah, O Yahuwah, how majestic is your name? Your name, how majestic is your name throughout the earth? We all know Lord is just the title. So what, what's his real name? Hmm? Why'd you take the names out? Because you know his name is powerful. You know his name is powerful, and if all Negroes was able to call on that through slavery, you wouldn't have been able to oppress us the way you did. <laughs> the slave, it would have been over with. But it was prophesied that we would forget his name. Anyway, let's go to the book of uh, chapter, let's go to the book of Jeremiah chapter 16. Since names don't matter for you white folks and you oppressor lovers who love the name Jesus, right? All right. Let's go to the book of uh, Jeremiah 16, 18 through 21. So it says this, I will pay them in full, nay, double for their iniquity and their sins. So the Most High told us we'd be over here in America, maybe 400 some odd years. We've been over here 500 some odd years and you've still been oppressing us, right? All right. So guess what the Most High is going to double yours to? A thousand. 800 to a thousand. Oh, that's ridiculous. I can't believe this stuff. Yeah, you can't believe it now, but you know I'm right. You knew eventually that your payback was going to have to come. You knew eventually that the white, you knew eventually that the Caucasian race was going to be brought down and you weren't going to be the man no more. Nobody was going to have to come to you to beg for shit no more. You know, you, 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 your time for ruling is almost up, buddy. <sighs> Just saying. Because, and here we go. I will pay them in full, nay, doubly, for their iniquity and their sins, because they have defiled my land with the corpses of the abominations. <sighs> Homosexuality. You push it on us. You, you, you put lesbianism in our women's heads so that way they can stay away from the black man. You put homosexuality on us so that way the head of the house, because you know the head of, of every household is the man. You, you, and even if you didn't, Put homosexuality, you tried to put the woman over the man. You know, you tried to make the woman more masculine and effeminate the man. So that way he has to submit unto her and there's no submission coming from the woman. You feel me? But homosexuality. Uh, shellfish and pork. You put pork in everything. Everything. GMO, abomination. 
you 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 cut down you cut down all the trees and forests in the land and put a building on it. You don't think you're gonna pay for that? You don't think some type of recompense gotta come for that? And have filled and have filled my own possessions with their abhorrent things. You filled the land with 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 carcasses of detestable and abominable things. Everything that's abominable, man. Anything, every, all of, anything that's abominable, that's a sin against the Lord, the Lord's word. It, it, it's it's uh, it's it's wrong. It's all just wrong, you know. It's just a transgression of the law. That's what sin is. And you also did another thing wrong too. Even though we know votes really don't count because y'all full of crap. Y'all had our people try to choose a king over us, over the Negroes that uh we and we gonna get in that later. And the Negroes that um that aren't that aren't of our nation, that isn't an Israelite. But let's keep going. It says and, and, and this is this is gonna tie into what I was saying earlier about the names. Oh, Yahuwah, my strength and my stronghold, my day in the trouble, so like in my refuge in the day of trouble, to you, nations shall come from the ends of the earth and say, our fathers have inherited utter delusions and things that are futile and worthless. Woo! You can't tell me that the Bible ain't real. Because we all know they didn't y'all done told so many lies that y'all starting to believe y'all lies. Y'all really believe y'all the chosen folks of God. Y'all believe that white Jesus is the actual Jesus that was back then in Jerusalem. Let's just put it in the circumspect. Let's just start off with the Israelites first. The Israelites blended in in Egypt, and we know Egyptians were dark skinned. So all of a sudden, you you white folks and Israelites though, y'all can't even last an hour in American sun. So I know for a fact, you wouldn't even last a minute in the Egyptian heat without some sunscreen. And you barely, you're not even stronger than us as a nation. Your strongest person can't go up against our strongest person. In a fight? Nah. Definitely not. You're weak. Weak nation. And you think you were out there building the pyramids or whatever? You think you were out there big, big digging up stuff? No. You weren't. That wasn't you. It's just put in the circumspect. If, if they couldn't tell Joseph, which was an Israelite apart from an Egyptian, what color was what color was Joseph? Black. So there's no doubt that the Israelites were of color. And let's just put in the circumspect. The Messiah had hair of wool. The only nation on this planet that had wool, the hair, are Negroes. Hmm, that's interesting, isn't it? And the Messiah and his Joseph took the Messiah and Mary, which is his mother. To Egypt. To Egypt. To blend in. How is how is that like how is how is he a white man? You're gonna have to pay for that because there's graven images. That's in Exodus 2. <sighs> and it says this in verse 20: Can a man make gods for himself that are no gods themselves? Now we're going back to the religions, we're going back to Christianity, Judaism, which is a lot of a lot of you uh, quote unquote woke years of lights out there. We're in a six point star. That's not ours. That belongs to the synagogue of Satan. That's not our star. But yeah, Judaism, Catholicism, Christianity, all that other BS, Jehovah Witnesses, all these guys that y'all done made, Allah. Buddha, Krishna, you know, Ashata, whatever these other guys that y'all done made, they ain't powers that can save you in, in the day of Yahuwah, man. There's no breath in it, man. And surely I will teach them once and for all, I will teach them my power and my might, and they shall know. That my name is Yahuwah. Ha. Yahuwah. Yahuwah over all names. Or Yahweh, whichever name you want to call them. Woke Israelites. Stay your head up. We already know what's going to happen. 
But uh, yeah, going back to the voting, you know, just like we know, you were supposed to have us choose somebody of our nation to be a king of us. But even though we know that really doesn't matter because voting doesn't matter itself. Voting itself doesn't even matter. Let's go to Deuteronomy 17, all right? Verse 15. So it says, you shall be free to set a king over yourself, one chosen by Yahuwah, your Elohim. Be sure to set as king over yourselves, one of your own people. You must not set a foreigner over you, one who is not your kinsman. But who who's in who's in office? Even if voting did count, who's in office right now? Who were the two cho two choices that you gave us back in twenty sixteen as the people who we could vote for? Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, right? And then you have Bernie Sanders, which supposedly was for us, right? But y'all y'all never did that. Y'all 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 never gave us somebody of our nation. And you think. You would think Barack Obama would have been of our nation, but you crackers out there, y'all know he was a Hamite. Y'all know he's a freaking stinking dirty African. And I don't mean an African as in the whole freaking land. I mean like he's one of them Africans that run around naked on trees and drink cow blood and, and, and give head to cows. Excuse my language. He's not one of us. If anything, he's a freaking Egyptian. Just like that. And his mama's Caucasian. So yeah. But uh, we'll go to, um, that's pretty much it right there. That's you white folks, y'all gonna have to pay for what the most, for what you did. According to the law. And let's not forget this last one. Let's go to the book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 52. And this is who you call Jesus said this, and he real with it. He said this off the rip. Boom. Then Yahushua said unto him, put up again thy sword in his place for all that they, for all they that take the sword shall Perish with the sword. Yep. All that perish by the sword shall be taken with the sword. But your sword was a gun. Your sword was a whip. Your sword was semantics and antics to try to dumb down people. You're going to have to pay for that, man. Let's go to the book of Genesis. So this is in the law, too. Let's go to the book of Genesis. Chapter 9, verse 6. So it says this. Whoso sheddeth man's blood, by his blood, by man shall, shall his blood be shed. For in the image of Elohim made he man. And as far as uh, homosexuality goes... Verse 7 says this, and you be ye fruitful and multiply, bring forth abundantly in the earth and multiply therein. So why in the world did y'all try to give us homosexuality? Because y'all know that it's wrong and y'all knew that it probably could stop us from, from, from populating the earth, which will never die out. We're the, we're the salt of the earth. You read that in the scripture before. We're the salt of the earth. We'll never die out. We multiplied exceedingly in Egypt. We dang sure gonna multiply exceedingly in America. And let's just put it in a circumspect for all you homosexuals out there. If gay was okay, let's put y'all, let's put some fags and some lesbos on a land, a uh, deserted land with no straight people at all. And let's see what the land will look like in a hundred years, okay? I didn't think so.
just like that. Now let's not forget, let's go to the book of Proverbs, chapter 22. Because y'all did, y'all did us dirty, man. Y'all did us dirty. Here we go. So it says this. Do not rob the wretch because he is wretch. Do not crush the poor man in the gate. For Yahuwah will take up their cause and despoil those who despoil them of life. So what do you do? You take money from us. And not only that, the, 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 the America was built on the backs of blacks. But yet and still, you take all the credit for everything. Black people make it up. You take it and you sell it. And you do all that. For what? Why are you taking credit for it for? Because you know that you're not that smart. You know that you're not that bright as a nation. You know you're not that fly. But you've deceived the majority of Negroes into thinking that you are that powerful and that you are that smart and that you are that bright. Nah, it ain't, it ain't gonna happen like that, bro. But uh, I'm done with uh going after y'all. Because y'all know what y'all doing is wrong. Y'all gonna pay for that. But uh, let's end this lesson out with a prayer. We're gonna go to Psalms 149. Oh yeah, before we do, y'all try y'all done tricked everybody into thinking that the scriptures are for everybody. Let's go to the book of Psalms 147. That the Bible is just universal. Negroes, listen, if you out there and you don't know the word, just remember this. Once you realize that the Bible is only talking to a specific nation of people that are that are definitely clothed, that are definitely open your understanding to what is really being said. Here we go. He issued his commands. Let's go to Psalms 147, 19 through 20. He issued his commands to Jacob, his statutes and rules to Israel. He did not do so for any other nation. Such of such rules, they know nothing. Hallelujah. They know nothing. Psalms 149, and we're going to pray what Nat Turner prayed. Sing to Yahuwah a new song, his praises in the congregation of the faithful. Let Israel rejoice in its maker. Let them of Zion exult in their king. Let them praise his name and dance with tremble and lyre. Let them chant his praises, for Yahuwah delights in his people. He adorns the lowly with victory. Let the faithful exult in glory. Let them shout for joy upon their couches with pians to Elohim in their throats and two-edged swords in their hands to impose retribution upon the nations, punishment upon the peoples, binding their kings with chains, binding their kings with shackles and their nobles with chains of iron, executing doom and decree against them. This is the glory of all his faithful. Hallelujah. Shalom.